Congressman, the U.S. intelligence community has an important role in warning our leaders about pandemics like COVID-19, because outbreaks, of course, are not just a public health matter, but also a matter of national security. Based on public statements and reporting alone, do you believe that President Trump has accurately conveyed the severity of the threat of COVID-19 to the American people? Are you saying presently? <clears throat> we are in the midst of the pandemic presently, correct. Right. Um, so repeat the question, because I, I, I guess I'm misunderstanding. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Has he accurately reflected the, the status of the pandemic? Conveyed the severity of the pandemic, yes. Has he accurately conveyed the I, severity of COVID-19 to the American people? Um, I believe so. You do. Um, and according to April 27, 2020, Washington Post article, President Trump received upwards of a dozen briefings on COVID-19 from the U.S. intelligence agencies between January and February of this year, during which time he repeatedly denied the severity of the threat. On January 22nd, he said, quote, we have it totally under control. On February 22nd, or 26th, he insisted that the number of cases would be, quote, close to zero within a number of days. As recently as March 10th, the president stated, quote, just stay calm. It will go away. And I'm sure you're familiar with the most recent reports, including today, that we may see as many as 3,000 deaths a day in America because of COVID-19. Because I also stammer uncontrollably when I'm telling the truth. This is John Radcliffe during a Senate confirmation hearing to become the director of national intelligence who would lead the country's 17 intelligence agencies. And that's underscored by the fact that Radcliffe has no experience working in intelligence beyond serving a little over a year on the House Intelligence Committee. And especially at a time when we're experiencing firsthand the dangers of inexperience at the federal level with regard to this pandemic, why we would move forward with a nominee who once again isn't qualified is just beyond comprehension. By the way, this isn't Radcliffe's first attempt at getting confirmed as DNI. He was nominated last year in July 2019, but withdrew from consideration only days later amid questions that he lied on his resume from his time as a U.S. attorney in Texas, which was probably a net positive as far as Trump was concerned. Although this time, there seems to be little to no opposition by Republicans, which isn't much of a surprise considering at this point, they would probably confirm a high school senior in charge of his school's Young Republicans Club so long as he wore a MAGA hat every day. As far as this interaction with Kamala Harris goes, I don't think you need a degree in psychology to realize when someone is full of it. Just watch when Kamala Harris asks the exceedingly simple question of whether Trump has appropriately conveyed the severity of the threat of coronavirus. Do you believe that President Trump has accurately conveyed the severity of the threat of COVID-19 to the American people? Are you saying presently? <clears throat> we are in the midst of the pandemic presently, correct. Right. Um, so repeat the question, because I, I, I guess I'm misunderstanding. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Has he accurately reflected the, the status of the pandemic? And the reason that Radcliffe can't seem to find his tongue is because he's walking the impossible line between being loyal enough to Trump, for whom that is the only qualification, and telling the truth. The only problem being that those two things are mutually exclusive. The fact is that Trump clearly didn't convey the severity of the threat of the virus. In fact, he spent precious weeks not only not capturing the severity, but downplaying it completely. Have you been briefed by the CDC? I have. Are the words about a pandemic at this point? No, we're not at all, and uh, we're... We have it totally under control. How concerned are you? Well, we pretty much shut it down. You know, a lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat, as the heat comes in. Uh, typically, that will go away in April. We're in great shape, though. It's going to disappear. One day, it's like a miracle. It will disappear. Uh, they're going to have vaccines, I think, relatively soon. And they're going to have something that makes you better, and that's going to actually take place, we think, even sooner. So it's uh, a lot of good things are happening. You know, we have thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that get better just by 
you know, sitting around and even going to work. Some of them go to work. So the fact that John Radcliffe could sit there under oath and say that, yes, Trump accurately conveyed the severity of the threat of a virus that went on to ravage this country worse than any other country in the world, a virus that has killed more people in America than any other country, infect more people in America than any other country, is already disqualifying unto itself. That is all you need to hear to know that this person is a Trump sycophant, and the last place they deserve to be is overseeing 17 US intelligence agencies, and especially not during a pandemic. And by the way, if being a fawning loyalist wasn't enough to turn you off, Ratcliffe was also on Trump's impeachment team, the same team that argued extorting a foreign country for dirt on a political opponent and then orchestrating a large-scale cover-up wasn't an offense worth removing a president over. He's criticized the whistleblower who rightfully issued a complaint over Trump's Ukraine call. He said that Russia didn't influence the outcome of any American elections, despite their interference campaigns in both 2016 and 2018, and the list goes on. So Ratcliffe may sit there during his confirmation hearing and spout platitudes about how he'll be an independent voice who who won't be influenced by Trump, but we hear that exact same thing from everyone in that chair. We heard it from Bill Barr, who'd set the Constitution on fire if Trump tweeted out a demand. And if the Senate is willing to compromise our national security in deference to yet another unqualified Trump lackey, they shouldn't be surprised when it's our country that continues to suffer. So when thousands of Americans are dying every day because of this administration's incompetence, the Senate should know that the American people are paying attention, and that this groveling at Trump's feet has long past reached its limit.